Welcome to another capsule, international relations capsule for the Shankar AAS Academy. Today we discuss the most recent visit to Moscow by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Apart from his visit to the European Union soon after he took over, this is his first visit abroad, a bilateral visit. How this timing was selected is not very clear. The reason given for this visit was that there is a requirement of an annual summit between leaders every year. This used to take place for many years, but during the pandemic years and following that, this was disrupted. So it was the turn of India, the Indian leader go to Moscow, to go to Moscow to continue this tradition of annual summits. There are very few countries with which, with which we have annual summits. Summits are occasional and not so regular. But with the Soviet Union, we had it and we continued it with Russia. And that is the justification given for his visit. But wasn't the real reason? Was, was there something urgent about this bilateral summit? Is a question to be answered. Another mystery is that he decided to go to Moscow on the same day that NATO countries were meeting in Washington to discuss more of the same issues, particularly the issue of the war in Ukraine. So after the war started, no visit had taken place between the summit level. So it appeared as though there was a particular reason why he chose to go there. And uh, one of the things that he indicated was that he would try and make peace in Ukraine. He has tried that before. He had spoken to President Putin that this is not the era of war. And it was indicated that he would like this war to end. But we did not criticize Russia in any manner. So this was going on. And uh, in the present situation, we have had some advantages in terms of pricing of oil, availability of oil. We were able to overcome the sanctions by the West, etc. And therefore, there were some positive points about India-Russia relations at this time. So his first objective, declared objective was to try and persuade President Putin to stop the war or a ceasefire or a discussion. And we had also that responsibility because the G20 summit in uh, Delhi had called for cessation of hostilities and the uh, solution of the problem. So as G20 chairman at that time, he had a responsibility to try to implement the decision of the G20. And that G20 decision was supported by NATO on the one side, one side and Russia on the other. And there was some sanctity about that. So is that the reason why he went? It's still not very clear. Because normally when a new prime minister takes over, he hardly is a new prime minister. He's, this is his third term. But even then, since he was a new prime minister, normally what he does is to visit some neighboring country. Normally it is Bhutan or Nepal. But friendly um, neighboring country is what prime ministers choose. And not certainly controversial visits like this, where the West is looking at uh, uh, Putin as an enemy. They are demonizing him. And that time, though our good relations with Russia continue, to be seen to be approving of Putin, or to be seen to be embracing him and talking to him in a friendly manner, may have caused some suspicions in the West. And Prime Minister may not have been unaware of it. He knew that this would happen. But still he went because it was important for us to maintain the relationship with, the, with Russia, even in these uncertain circumstances. There are several reasons for it. Of course, we do not know what the nature of the new world order will be. One indication is that with Russia and China coming together, Probably the new old world order may be uh, between, on the one side, democratic countries and on, on the other side, autocratic countries. 
So if that is going to be the kind of global order emerging, then naturally we have to be on the side of the democratic countries. And we have good relations with the Western countries, particularly the United States. But the complication this time is election results coming from different countries are most unexpected, whether it is UK or France or even Iran. The elections brought out some new trends, uh, generally moving towards the left, as it were, or generally moving towards reform, as it were. And uh, India itself, the election results were different from what it was last time. And this, he did not have the absolute majority to rule as one party. And he needed to take uh, other parties, at least two parties, had to join him in order to make the form the government. So the whole international situation is an uncertain uh, situation. And uh, so what he did was some people may think that it was a kind of adventure. It was, he was taking a calculated risk. And the calculated risk is to maintain the good relationship with Russia. At the same time, tell the West that we are trying to end the war and persuade uh, President Putin as a friend to um, not to uh, continue, continue the war. So it is uh, clearly there was a bilateral context to it and also there was a multilateral context to it. So we know what happened there. And as far as the discussion on the war is concerned, a part of that discussion, of course, they say, spent several hours together alone. So many people do not know what exactly they discussed. But there was a public segment when Mr. Modi quite firmly told the president that war is not a solution to the world's problems. He referred to the killing of women and children and urged very strongly that something should be done. This, this he did publicly. But President Putin did not respond to it at all. He did not say anything about it. But they agreed that terrorism is a big danger. That has been the same view Russia has held and we have held. So in this public exchange, which came on television, it was clear that on the question of the Ukraine war, President Putin, Putin did not want to make any commitment either way, either to fight or not to fight. That is one aspect of it. As far as bilateral relations are concerned, we got to know when the joint statement was issued that very extensive discussions took place on major issues and there was agreement on many of them. And it is clearly a very close relationship engaging all aspects of bilateral relations. Whether it is political, economic, uh, cultural, scientific, all these are actually dealt with in the, in the, in the communique, the joint communique. It's very extensive and very strong words are used that it is a new strategic relationship. Privileged strategic relationship is a new word they have added. So in other words, if you read the communique, you will find that on bilateral relations, a lot of progress was made. And that is likely to raise eyebrows in the West. But Prime Minister Modi is confident that these relations are not a zero-sum game. It is not that you have good relations with, so with Russia, you won't have good relations with the US. That is an accepted principle. And therefore, the fact that he had this very extensive cooperation program on bilateral relations was clearly uh, a victory mm -hmm. for Prime Minister Modi. So in the present situation, when the you know, uh, whole, uh, whole international situation is in a flux, it will be difficult. Uh, it'll be, it will have been difficult for us to make such a comprehensive uh, uh, agreement. So one of the things that, uh, so this visit, I was talking about the bilateral aspects as well as the multilateral aspects. 
As far as President Putin was concerned, this was a great opportunity for him to display his close relationship with India. Because when most countries he cannot visit, or other, other states do not visit him at this time, and therefore he had a specific advantage in having this visit. And he went out of his way to detail all the kinds of cooperation that the two countries will have, as far as he is concerned. As far as Mr. Modi is concerned, there is this concern that the Americans and others will react negatively to this particular visit. That also he knew. But this shows a certain amount of confidence on his part that whatever little disruption it may take place between West Europe and himself, he will be able to deal with this. So at the moment, his anxiety was to settle bilateral issues and try and increase all kinds of cooperations, cooperation with Russia. And this is particularly important for us because India is not part of any military alliance. Military alliances are being made in different places. And there is even an effort to convert the Quad into a military alliance. But we do not really have any military alliance with any country. So in a situation where global situation is such an, in a flux, who do we depend upon? And what are the kinds of cooperation that you can have with different countries? So it is a, um, an effort to make sure that we there is no disruption in our relations with Russia, regardless of the uh, conflict that is uh, uh, taking place. So, this fact that the NATO conference was also being held in Washington at the time had its own, its own complications. So, what was established during this visit? was it is not the, rela the relationship between India and Russia, often we refer to it as a legacy that is left over from the past. And now it is different now. It is not just a legacy, but a live relationship. And we are able to take new measures. So, so we, Russia is a big country. It is a nuclear power. It's a missile power. Uh, it is a permanent member of the Security Council. Well, these aspects have to be taken into account. So it's not easy for us, or it is not desirable for us, to create any disturbance in the India-Russia relations. And even today, about 60% of our weapons come from uh, Russia. So the cooperation with Russia and its uh, improvement or increase is, in a way, beneficial to India. And I also mentioned that because we do not have any military alliance, uh, we have the threat from China and Pakistan. And therefore, you need to have some kind of relationship with the bigger powers. And Russia, similarly, with other countries also, so uh, United States, etc. also, we can have, we need to have a good relationship. So that balance is being brought into our relationship with that, with Russia also, with uh, other countries also, we have a useful and bilateral relationship. So, um, as you know, we also are engaged, are involved in the uh, SCO, that is Shanghai Cooperation, which is dominated by China. Uh, BRICS, also dominated by China. Quad, dominated by the Americans. And these uh, groups, we are an active member. We have even shared these groups. So that gives us also a general acceptance. And so no country is untouchable for us. And therefore, this relationship, growing relationship, should not be questioned. As far as uh, defense cooperation is concerned, as I said earlier, Russia is still in the forefront. The war has created a different situation in Russia. It may be difficult for us to get all the weapons and the spare parts we may need. Uh, you know, uh, like submarines and many other. So, even when there is a new world order emerging, we need to 
stay close to Russia also. That was the other, other logic. So, I mean, United States, Australia, Japan, uh, with these countries, we have joint military exercises and we also import weapons from them. So, to exclude Russia from all this and not to have defense cooperation will not be a balanced relationship. So, that is probably the reason that Mr. Modi decided to make use of this opportunity uh, to build bilateral relations in a very strong manner. So the uh, Russians are also reciprocated this sentiment. So he was given a very warm welcome in, in Moscow. Uh, President Putin spent a lot of time with uh, Prime Minister Modi. Uh, national award, the highest national award of Russia was conferred upon him. And a lot of people involvement were there in the um, in the celebrations or as it were the receptions, etc. So the time spent between the two of them was quite huge, and they discussed virtually everything in bilateral relations as well as the um, global relationships. So, as I said earlier, as far as the war is concerned, there was no public statement on the part of Putin. But from our side, Prime Minister Modi kept insisting that the uh, war should end. The joint statement which came at the end of uh, the uh, visit is particularly significant. It was called a special and uh, authorized or privileged um, strategic relationship. That is, privileged relationship is new, so special and privileged relationship, strategic relationship between the two countries. So, if the, 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 uh, the joint statement elaborates all this many, many in paragraphs whether it is trade, which will have to be strengthened, then the trade increase in the last few years have been particularly emphasized. Then between the currencies of India and uh, the Russia, some kind of linkage is being established. Discussions are taking, taking place. In the old days, there was a rupee-ruble arrangement. This is but different. That is making the rupee a legal tender in Russia and uh, exchangeable, convertible. And that discussion, they said they will continue. Then um, uh, fertilizers, fertilized, chemical fertilizers are a sheer necessity for India. So a separate group was set up in order to continue the uh, cooperation in uh, supplying fertilizers to India. And President Putin made a separate reference to the fact uh, that uh, India's needs would be met. And as far as nuclear power is concerned, we know that even after India signed the nuclear, uh, you know, agreement with on nuclear cooperation with the United States, which is supposed to have given us the same status as NPT countries, but nobody has come up with any kind of new reactors. In fact, uh, locations were established for uh, United States to have six reactors. In um, the uh, French were supposed to set up another few reactors. and uh, But they all have uh, withdrawn from it, citing various reasons, particularly the compensation issue. You are familiar with that. That means uh, uh, we, we believe that uh, responsibility of any losses will be that of the supplier and not the operator, which is not acceptable to them. So, but in, even within that limitation, uh, now Russia has agreed to set up more reactors. Now we have only Kodan Kulam. It was decided that Kodan Kulam should be expanded, but in between came the Fukushima disaster. There was some reference, Indians were getting a little bit nervous about nuclear power, particularly in Kodan Kulam. So, all these uh, uncertainties and, uh, have been removed. 
and uh, they have uh, russia has agreed to set up more nuclear reactors in india so this is particularly important because france united states etc have withdrawn their offers then space in space we have very close cooperation with uh, russia and there also increase of uh, in various areas in uh, uh, managing our space program we also have agreements with nasa etc but with russia also we have decided to strengthen the uh, space cooperation as far as india's uh, permanent membership of the security council is concerned it was clearly um, indicated by the russians that they will continue to support india even in spite of all the complications in this matter and no consensus and so on but india's candidature will be supported by the by russia so i just mentioned some of the aspects it runs into several pages and when you read it you will find that this is a very elaborate very precise and very detailed uh, collaboration program in all these areas that is nuclear space military etc so as i said earlier all this might provoke united states and others to protest maybe some of statements have already been made but what uh, what uh, uh, president I mean, prime minister modi is trying to do is to take a very brave position on this uh, to make sure that we are not isolated in any manner we will have good relations with good, both countries and nobody is untouchable as far as we are concerned uh so the visit went off very well from the point of view of uh, both india and russia but for the rest of the world this is considered to be a kind of uh partnership which they challenge because of the present situation and maybe the expectation is that uh, within the next few months there will be some development which will enable the europeans to understand the logic of our of our position so so even in an uncertain world india and russia will work together and develop the relationships that is the message that comes out of uh, this visit and also there is a certain amount of boldness on the part of uh, mr modi because he is confident that uh, this can be dealt with so we have the conversations we have the decisions we have the joint communicate and overall it has been a very successful visit in spite of the fact that this was a, a big chess game going in the world and in that circumstance whether or not getting close to one particular country whether it is desirable or not but obviously our uh, uh, we are confident that we will be able to deal with other countries and also have a an equal and balanced relationship sure. uh, one other thing happened in the case of uh, on his visit to austria why did he choose austria for a visit at this time what was the reason austria is a peaceful good country very prosperous technologically very advanced with close relations with india for the last 75 years but in the last 41 years no prime minister has visited austria simply because there are not any bilateral not bilateral problems there see diplomacy becomes very active when there are problems if there are no problems there will be no occasion to meet or talk so some people say it is important to have some problems so that there is a justification for us to get together so i was ambassador to austria i spent most of my time working in the un agencies like the iaea and non bilateral relations i was friendly with them their decisions were taken political relation were taken in european union so they really did not have to negotiate with us we were negotiating in brussels and that was copied by australia but not two things we had different opinion like self determination of all peoples which we do not accept that they don't believe in the peaceful use of nuclear energy because they think it is dangerous they had built a nuclear station but it was never commissioned because of the hesitation of the people and they have plenty of 
hydroelectric power available in Australia. So it's a very good relationship, but he went there not basically to fill up the gap of 41 years, but to give a signal, one additional signal that he is not just going to Russia and he is not giving any attention to the rest of the world. And Austria is a neutral country. It is not a NATO country. It is an EU country. And uh, Vienna is the capital of global diplomacy in many ways. Um, Kissinger was trained there. And so it has a tradition, all the Vienna conventions, you know. So Austria has a unique place. In this. So he's giving a signal that he's not just going to Russia and coming away. He is, in fact, going through a European country to brief them perhaps about his discussions and to give a message to them that India is equally concerned with the, with the European countries. And the best country that we could choose was Austria because there's no problem. We have good relations, cultural relations, were rather 30,000 Indian community, a prosperous country. We resolved any problem that had existed in people crossing into Austria. Some agreement has been reached. So it was a wise move on the part of uh, Prime Minister Modi to make a visit. It was a symbolic visit to Austria. And of course, in the process, we said nice things about each other. And we must have shared our concerns on various issues. And that would have made an impact in the sense that we were not ignoring anybody. Even if Austria is a small country, we spent a whole day there with all the usual uh, celebrations and uh, activities and protocol and deep discussions with the Chancellor. So that was a, a kind of insurance that he took that uh, this is not a uh, India or Russia exercise alone, but you'd like the whole world to understand what we are trying to do. So these are the salient features of this visit, but this will be discussed in the future in great detail, very many new ideas and very many uh, facts may come out, but on the whole, we can say both the visit to Moscow and to Austria by uh, Mr. Narendra Modi was a success and that is what the Ministry of External Affairs has called it. Thank you very much.